most people still today think that all entertainment uh, to do with movies, drama, is, is, is there for nothing more than their entertainment. It never ever was that case. Of course, television can't perform such miracles as this, yet. But perhaps there's no harm wishing that it could. The greatest social, social med uh, messages are promoted through movies and drama, high drama, through the fixation of emotive sequences, emotional sequences, not logical, factual sequences, but pushing points across in an emotion, emotional way which register and fix in the mind. So emotional content is very, very important rather than going through an actual discussion or an argument using logic and facts. There's no debate. And when you're being downloaded through fiction, your guard is down, the sensor part of your brain is not in, uh, in action. It isn't saying, yes, I agree with this, I disagree with that, as you would in a debate or a lecture. You're actually in an alpha state, being completely downloaded with new ideas. Uh, about a hundred years ago, this big organization with many branches, uh, they wanted to rule the world, basically, using Britain as a nucleus of, of a system, an embryo, uh, which also was going to be joined with the U.S. Uh, under the Anglo-American establishment, uh, wrote about the kind of culture and the changes of culture over a hundred-year period that they would actually design, implement, and bring in. And um, H.G. Wells talked about it, too. He talked about arenas. And he says arenas could be put up across the world for sports, for instance. Now, at that time, sports was something that uh, children, uh, school children were into. Adults became adults and got onto adult things. So it was unimaginable at the time that people could actually believe that uh, uh, there was even a need for adult sports and entertainment, never mind having ar arenas built across the world. But he said, we can do this, and you know, voiced basically a sports culture for the males Using a tribal system, we're all tribal to an extent, that's why we even bother to vote for a tribal leader. Uh, this is well understood, that's why we're supplied with these leaders. And because the, the average man was to become more disengaged from his own destiny, as the expert class arose, it was decided that, that the males would get their, their, their outlet, basically. Um, being gradually becoming helpless as, as males through sports. Therefore, they'd have a tribal team they could identify with. Uh, they could um, cheer them on as they were winning. In their own personal lives, they were getting nowhere. They were getting disenfranchised, in a sense, as experts took over um, decision-making for them in all kinds of fields. So this was psychology at use, uh, planned before they even implemented the sports. That's why they pay athletes these fantastic salaries. I was listening to the radio the other day. They just contracted to pay one, one player on one team six million dollars a year. Can you believe this? And why is that? It's the Roman circus. What does the emperor do when the people become restive and when the people are asking questions and when the people don't like the policies of the emperor? He sends them to the circus. He creates a circus. He builds a giant coliseum. And he begins to throw the Christians to the lions. And he has great chariot races and football games and basketball games, all to keep the idiots preoccupied with things that don't mean anything in the scheme of the entire world so that they don't have the time to learn what the truth is, so they don't ever get smart enough to learn how they're being manipulated, so they don't ever question the emperor. That's why they pay a player on a football team or a baseball team a million or two million or three million dollars a year. It is the Roman circus. I know men who don't know anything in the world except who plays third base for the Mets. And they think that's a great accomplishment. And they meet and pat each other on the back and bond and go have cocktails and talk about what this guy that plays third base for the Mets did in last night's game. It's sad. It's really sad. Um, when radio came along, of course, they, they, they used that to the maximum. 
uh, sports for the men, um, soaps basically for the women, and then in came television, as I say, with its alpha state, its hypnotic state, and sure enough, around the 1960s, really, 50s and 60s, it took off. It really, really took off. Uh, and men became glued on Saturday nights to the sports shows. A culture industry, which is called by its own the culture industry. The Soviet Union had a department called the culture industry. Their actors and directors were called the cultural leaders. Leaders. Because they would, like a computer, people are like computers, um, all you have to do is keep giving them new updates every so often, and you can change an entire country, or a nation, or a block of nations. We're all getting the same uploads, upgrades, at the same time along certain paths. Today we call it political correctness. Most people want to belong to their peer group. They want to be the same as everyone else when it comes to opinions. In fact, they judge their own personal sanity by bouncing ideas off their, their neighbors and friends who will answer back and agree on these same topics in kind. It doesn't matter if the topics or, the, or what you're given are facts or, or utter nonsense, as long as everyone agrees at the same time, you'll say, well, I'm sane, and your friends will all agree, because they've had the same information given to them. If it's on TV and a famous face uh, says something, then it must be true. He doesn't have to show you facts or anything else. You'd, you've been brought up with these faces. That's why they keep these guys on television into their 70s and 80s. You've grown up with this father figure who's on television every night at six o'clock uh, in your house, in your room, staring right at you. Uh, and he's a father figure. Would he tell you a lie? That, that, so you naturally never suspect him. And this same man will lead you through new topics. He'll, he'll introduce experts on the topics. They'll have a little summary at the end of every talk. And you are now left with the conclusion that's presented to you. As you, you don't arrive at it, it's given to you, and it's good enough for you. We're programmed today uh, perfectly, just like machines. We tie this, this in with the Brzezinski. Brzezinski said in two ages, now this guy was way up with the NSA. He was a, he's a master geopolitician. Uh, he works, he admits he works in, in 20, 50 year periods to do with geopolitics in other countries. But he said himself, the public will shortly be unable to think or reason for themselves. He was meaning by that the form that, that of, of, of uh, information that was given to them, the type, the, the formulas that were in use then in the 1970s, he says eventually they'll be unable to think or reason for themselves. They, and eventually, he said, they will expect the media uh, to do all their thinking and reasoning for them. Well, that's happened today. That, that's why people today can't think outside of the programming from television. Is there any room in, in, uh, in a kind of society where these manipulations are not taking place for this type of entertainment or any type of entertainment at all? If people understand that a game is a game, if people understand that nobody, nobody, no matter what they do, is worth paying two or three million dollars a year for, people should be able to get rich if they want to mm -hmm. by the sweat of their individual labor, okay? By going out and doing something for the world, mm -hmm. not by taking people's minds away from the emperor. It's a game. Football's a game. Football's a game. But let me tell you something. When 150 of the most powerful men and women in the world can meet in secret in Baden-Baden, Germany and plot the fate of billions and nobody even cares about it. But six football players go to lunch together and it's in the headlines across the country. You have a reflection of the society in which that exists. And it is a sick, sick society that is doomed to self-destruction.
So based on that scenario, there's some truth into what these, these men are looking at. Absolutely, and that's what makes me so sick, is that I'm trying to wake up a people who on a daily basis are proving the ones that I'm warning them about to be right. Mm -hmm. Well, it, so that even though a minority, there are people out there that you recognize are awake to this, if they don't do something about it, they will lose that ability to be free in that way. That's correct. Whether they might think, well, I don't need to worry about it because I know what I know and I'm fine. That's it right. It doesn't work that way. There's yes. a connection here to everything. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. A nation of people who are willing to send their sons and daughters that they profess that they love to a foreign country to die and they use the excuse to themselves that they're sending them off to defend our country and they know damn well that's a lie, are doomed. This is a scientific dictatorship which Bertrand Russell said and the Huxleys said, both Aldo and Julian Huxley said they would bring in the scientifically controlled society. The nature of the ultimate revolution with which we are now faced is precisely this that we are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which uh, will enable the controlling oligarchy who have always existed and presumably always will exist uh, to get people actually to love their servitude. Uh, th this is the, seems to me the, the ultimate uh, in malevolent revolution, shall we say, and uh, this, is a, this is a problem which uh, has interested me for many years and about which I wrote uh, 30 years ago a, a fable, The Brave New World, which uh, is uh, essentially the account of a society making use of all the uh, devices at that time available and some of the devices which uh, uh, I imagined to be possible, uh, making use of them in order to First of all, to standardize the population, to iron out uh, inconvenient human dis uh, um, differences, uh, to create, uh, so to say, mass-produced uh, models of human beings arranged uh, in some kind of a scientific uh, caste system. A number of techniques about which I talked seem to be here already, and that there seems to be a general movement uh, in the direction of this kind of ultimate revolution, this, this method of control uh, by which uh, people can be made to enjoy a state of affairs which by any decent standard they ought not to enjoy. Uh, this, I mean, the enjoyment of, uh, of servitude.